Good morning. Welcome to the First Baptist Church of Elkin worship broadcast. If you are joining us live on Facebook, please drop a comment in the comment section to say this mo good morning and to let us know that you are with us today. We would love to interact with you during worship. We would also like to extend a warm welcome to those who are listening via radio this morning. If this is your first time worshiping with us, we extend a warm welcome to you. We would love to know who is with us this morning, so please feel free to say that this is your first time in the comments, and our church family will greet you with the same warmth and kindness that they would if you were right here in the building. And as always, if you have a prayer of need or a physical need, don't hesitate to reach out and make us aware of those people and situations as they arise. We have a guest speaker this morning, Reverend Rebecca Maynard. Over the years, Rebecca has helped us grow spiritually, and we are glad to have her with us today. This morning, we share the peace and love of Christ with each of you. And at this time, we invite you to share the peace of Christ with those around your screen today or with your online neighbors. Again, we are so thankful we get to be together virtually this morning. Welcome to worship. At this time, please join us in singing hymn 15, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing.
Let's bow our heads together in prayer this morning. Holy God, we are thankful this morning to be gathered in such a sacred place, knowing that your presence is among us. We praise you for the blessing of your goodness and faithfulness to the past few months that have been so difficult, not only for our church, but for the entire world. We ask for your continued guidance as we continue to face the unknowns of the future and what comes next. Regardless of our circumstances, we cling to you today, God, through your precious son, Jesus. We recognize that God's house, the place that is truly sacred, is the residence that you take up in each of us through the power of the Holy Spirit. And even though we are not physically together today as the church, we are still united as one body through that same spirit that dwells richly in us. We place our faith and our hope in you this morning, Jesus. Open our hearts and our minds to receive what you will show us today. Use us as your instruments of truth and love. Fulfill your promises to the world through us, your church, today so that your kingdom would be expanded and the world would be left a better place because your people are in it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now let us sing hymn 465, I Want Jesus to Walk With Me.
as we move into a time of giving this morning, I'm reminded of the beautiful ministry opportunities we have at First Baptist. From the church garden to working with Tri-C and Grace Clinic, our growing youth and children's ministries, we have many opportunities for spiritual growth. On July 11th, we hosted a creation camp for children. We had 11 children attend and learn how to worship God through art. Your generosity made this possible. God continues to be faithful to our church so that we can do ministry and serve our community. And one of the ways that God is faithful is by blessing this congregation with the ability to be generous. Your offerings make the kingdom work that we do here possible. Thank you for giving. You can give online at elkinfbc.com under the Give tab or by mail to 110 Gwynn Avenue or the drop box in the glass foyer. Let us pray. Dear God, guide us to be generous even during difficult times. Open our eyes to the needs beyond these walls. Let us be a source of refuge and a place where people can feel your love. Amen.
Our scripture reading for this morning comes from the book of Genesis, chapter 28, verses 10 through 19a. Jacob left Beersheba and set out for Haran. He reached a certain place and spent the night there. When the sun had set, he took one of the stones at that place and put it near his head. Then he lay down there. He dreamed and saw a raised staircase, its foundation on earth, and its top touching the sky. And God's messengers were ascending and descending on it. Suddenly, the Lord was standing on it and saying, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham and the God of Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying. Your descendants will become like the dust of the earth. You will spread out to the west, east, north, and south. Every family of earth will be blessed because of you and your descendants. I am with you now. I will protect you everywhere you go, and I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done everything that I have promised you. When Jacob woke from his sleep, he thought to himself, The Lord is definitely in this place, but I didn't know it. He was terrified and thought, This sacred place is awesome. It's none other than God's house and the entrance to heaven. After Jacob got up early in the morning, he took the stone that he had put near his head, set it up as a sacred pillar, and poured oil on the top of it. And he named that sacred place Bethel. These words are the gift of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning. It is good to be here to worship with my First Baptist family. I appreciate Mark asking me to preach this morning while he fulfills his required annual military training. I've spent some time recently with my Presbyterian friends. However, they proved harder to convert than I anticipated. So here I am back with the Baptists. And I'm happy to be with you all via the wonders of technology. Will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Silently, stealthily, effortlessly, the androgynous and ethereal figures climbed up and then down the ladder. Captivated and mesmerized by their movement, I stood motionless. I found myself holding my breath as the figures never lost their grip, never let a foot slip continuously ascending and descending the ladder of lights. Dreamily, I gazed at the ladder, tiptoeing around it, afraid to disturb the figures precariously perched on the rungs of the ladder. The ladder quietly glowed in shades of blue and then shifted ever so slightly to shades of purple. The airy figures flickered and flowed in variations of white light on each rung. I was standing along with my husband, Mark, in the Sanctuary of Grace Cathedral in San Francisco last fall. After walking their outside labyrinth, we had gone inside to the sanctuary to walk the labyrinth inside. It was here that we discovered the light installation hanging from the ceiling created by artists Benjamin Burgery and Jim Campbell. Titled Jacob's Dream, A Luminous Path, The latter was made of the light and moving images that I described, designed to evoke a pathway between earth and heaven, between the visible and invisible. As I stood there intrigued, I became conscious of the fact that I had entered a luminous and liminal space. Liminal denotes a threshold, a transitional or initial stage of a process, 
It signifies a place of transformation, movement from one place and yet not at the other. When in a liminal space, one is in between. Liminal is a word that my older computer does not like. When I typed the word liminal, spelled L-I-M-I-N-A-L, for all you visual learners out there like me, I got those fun red squiggly lines underneath. Liminal was not a word in my vocabulary until nine years ago. It was the subject of a required book for the course I was taking, and I, like my computer, didn't particularly like the word. I discovered, however, that liminal beautifully expresses a process in our spiritual journey. I decided to learn to like it, as it was just the word I needed to add to my terminology when conveying to others the stages and places of spiritual growth. During Justin's reading of this morning's scripture of the Genesis passage, perhaps the African-American spiritual we are climbing Jacob's ladder came to mind. Or if you are of my generation, Stairway to Heaven by Led Zeppelin may have started playing in your head. Whichever song was or wasn't in your head, the story of Jacob's ladder in the Hebrew scriptures is a pivotal story in the ancient narrative depicting how God's promise to Abraham continues along its path to fruition. From Abraham to Isaac to Jacob, God's promise endures, confirming God's blessings on Jacob directly to him through a dream. God promises to Abraham's grandson Jacob a specific land, that his descendants will be like the dust, abundant and covering the land, and that many others will be blessed through him, much like what he promised Abraham. Yet God promises even more, that God will be with Jacob wherever he goes, no longer just in the land where he resides, but God will be everywhere with him and will not leave him. God confirms the blessing that Isaac bestowed upon his youngest son, and then he adds to it. This is the same Jacob who has stolen his brother's blessing and birthright, conniving with his mother, Rebecca, to trick Isaac into giving his youngest son the blessing that rightfully belongs to Esau, the oldest son. Upon discovery of the treachery of Jacob, scripture states that Esau hated Jacob. Esau then bursts forth with the assertion, I will kill my brother Jacob. Rebekah, told of these hateful words spoken by Esau, quickly devised another scheme to, pervert, to preserve Jacob's blessing by telling Isaac, I am weary of my life because of the Hittite women. If Jacob marries one of the Hittite women such as these, one of the women of the land, what good will my life be to me? I certainly hope my daughters-in-law know how much I appreciate that they are not Hittite women. Rebecca knew that her distress over whom Jacob would marry would persuade Isaac to agree that Jacob now needs a wife, but certainly not from Canaan. So Isaac calls Jacob, blesses him again, and charges him not to marry one of the Canaanite women. Instead, he is to go to his mother's father and take as a wife one of the daughters of Laban, Rebekah's brother. So now Jacob is on the lamb, running, literally, for his life. Jacob finds himself having left Beersheba in Canaan and heading toward Haran, heading back to where his grandfather Abraham first received the promise and call of God. Jacob is in between home and the unknown. He is in between possible death at his brother's hands and life ahead in a new place. Jacob is in between singleness and marriage. He is in between youth and adulthood. Jacob is in a liminal space. He is on the threshold of leaving the past and yet not fully entering the future. His present moment is one of betwixt and between running for his life 
and running into his new life, just not there yet. It is precisely in this time when the old is gone and the new hasn't yet emerged. Jacob is in the scary and uncertain middle, yet it is a place full of potential. God is meeting Jacob exactly where he is, as he is. Jacob hasn't changed. Jacob hasn't suddenly become good and stopped his deceitful ways. Jacob has shown that he has the potential to become what God created him to be. He is given the opportunity to live into God's dream for him, to become the bearer of God's promises, to carry forth a new vision for the Hebrew people, to be a blessing to others. Alan Roxburg, the author of the book where I first discovered the word liminal, wrote that when a person is on the threshold, that is, in a liminal space, one is not only freed from their structural identities, but enters a realm of potentiality. When we, like Jacob, find ourselves in a liminal space, we are on the threshold where we are freed from that which was before and discover that we have an opening in our lives where we become aware of options to live our lives differently than what we previously imagined. No threshold need be a threat, but rather an invitation and a promise, declares John O'Donohue. Somewhere between Canaan and Haran in a nondescript place, Jacob chooses to spend the night simply because the sun had set. He takes a stone upon which to lay his head to sleep. He sleeps, he dreams, and a ladder, a stairway, appears with the messengers of God ascending and descending on it. The messengers <clears throat> do not speak. Rather, it is the Lord who appears to Jacob and speaks directly to him. God's promises are quite clear, and they are many. We would all wish for God to be so clear and straightforward. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. Jacob states that the Lord is in this place. Not that the Lord was in this place, but is. And he wasn't aware of this. Jacob is now awake, aware, and available to God. Jacob is on the threshold of transformation in a liminal place. Another description for this threshold where Jacob finds himself is a thin place where it is said that heaven and earth meet. Celtic spiritual tradition claims heaven and earth are only three feet apart, but in thin places that distance is even closer. But we know that in truth <clears throat> there is no distance between creation and creator we are irrevocably intertwined, in the words of Mark Darling. It is in a thin place where we become aware of God's inimitable presence. A thin place is where we may experience God particularly close and intimate. While we believe that God is everywhere, it is in those times when we cross a threshold into an understanding of just how close the Spirit of God is. The beauty of Jacob's dream, his vision of God, is that Jacob did nothing to deserve this showing of God. Jacob was merely available. This story serves as a reminder that we don't have to do anything or be a certain goodness in order to merit God's presence or God speaking to us. If Jacob, that rascally scoundrel, can receive God's blessings, then we can too. Each one of us has the ability to know and love the God who already loves us, who permeates the whole of creation and who moves and lives within you and me. This God introduces to the Hebrews, through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the concept of a knowable, present, available and living God. 
This God of Israel is the same God who takes on flesh and blood in Jesus, who becomes one of us to show us how God's love and grace flow through each one of us. This is Jesus who will be with us always, the same promise. Jacob experiences this incredible time on the threshold with God all alone. There is no one with whom he can share it. So he takes his stone pillow and places it upright and anoints it with oil so that others will know that this is a holy place, the gate of heaven, the house of God. Surely God is in this place, the stone cries out. Richard Rohr says true liminal space is always a threat to the status quo. While liminal is usually defined as threshold, it may also mean brow, edge, portal, or gateway. Whichever word we use, he continues, the connotation is that we are leaving one thing, state, or place and about to enter something entirely different or new and undergo a unique kind of waiting before the new space is entered. But we must not force our way through liminal space until we learn what it has to teach us. You and I are all in an enormous, unusual, and boundless liminal space right now. This liminal space that we share is the coronavirus pandemic, COVID-19, another set of words under which my old computer insists on placing those fun red squiggly lines. We've all left behind the life we knew it as we knew. We wait for the new to emerge. It is a time in between, and oh yes, it is a unique kind of waiting. Right now, our liminal space is a threshold of untold discomfort and fatigue, plagued literally with sickness and death in this dream, this nightmare of reality. While we really want to force our way through and leave this threshold far behind, we need to learn what it has to teach us. It is in this time and place of liminality that we may sense a vision, one that encourages us to step from the threshold into a new life, a new way of being, a way of seeing with new eyes, God's eyes. A liminal time allows for a vision to unfold. It is often a challenge to cross a threshold and demands courage as we discern God's call. It involves trusting whatever emerges and trusting God to be in this place. We are learning on this threshold of COVID that we are globally connected in ways we never imagined. We now see firsthand what one of us does or doesn't do affects another. And yes, it may even kill someone. The virus connects us and hopefully reminds us to care for our neighbor, bringing out our love and kindness to unite us. Another reality that also occupies our COVID liminal space involves economics. Yes, we are in this together, but as we have heard and know, we are all in different boats. Some boats resemble yachts, some motor boats, and others are dinghies. Some of us have lost jobs that won't come back. Some of us have lost our income due to illness or reduced hours or a business folding. Some of us must work despite the risks. We are in this together, but how do we respond when someone's boat springs a leak or they lose their oars or their motor? Will we charter a ferry and help others less fortunate? Time spent on the threshold will hopefully allow us to see and hear the Spirit of God moving us to take action in love. In addition to this liminal time of illness and economic instability, we are faced with the pressing truth of how we are racially disconnected. COVID has shown us how disparately we are affected because of our color and has laid bare the inequalities that racism, the plague before the plague, has caused for over 400 years. 
While we are working at an astonishingly rapid pace to come up with a vaccine for COVID-19, it is not so easy or swift to develop immunization to the plague of racism or to even begin to comprehend the depths and tentacles of infection which racism has caused. Spurred on by the murder of George Floyd and numerous others, we stand here on the threshold where we may examine our own unacknowledged racism and lean into a new life, to step forward to respond to God's call to work for racial equity. Martin Luther King Jr. said, an individual has not started living until they can rise above the narrow confines of their individualistic concerns to the broader concerns of all humanity. What each of us does to combat racism needs to be understood individually and communally. May you and I, through transformed lives, infect others with the change we wish to see in the world, to put a spin on the words of Mahatma Gandhi. So how will you and I do that? Will we awaken from our dream, realize that God is in this place, and stay woke? When we are woke, we are awake and aware of what is going on in our community, especially when it comes to racism and social injustice. Woke is a word of action, of taking a stand. We saw it in the life of civil rights leader John Lewis. Certainly, we can qualify Jesus as woke who walked among us pointing out injustices, racial, social, economic, and acting to correct them one person at a time. One of God's promises to Jacob and previously to Abraham was that he will be a blessing to others. Are we available to God during this in-between time to also be a blessing to others as we seek what is beyond the threshold? Will we step from our liminal place and allow ourselves to trust Jesus' words in John's Gospel and recognize that the Spirit is like the wind and blows wherever it chooses? Will we awake, be awake, aware, and available to this Spirit of God that stays with us in our liminal time and leads us forward into new ways of being? Yes, we are all in a liminal space together right now. And there are plenty of us that are in a personal liminal space other than that caused by COVID-19. So we may ask ourselves, at which threshold am I now standing? What am I leaving and what am I about to enter? What is preventing me from crossing my next threshold? Jacob's excitement at the threshold led him to exclaim, surely God is in this place and I did not know it. Will our threshold lead us to proclaim the same, that God is here now and always will be, that God is present in every moment no matter how mundane, that bidden or not bidden, God is present. Where are you stacking stones of blessings and grace? Where is God meeting you on the threshold, calling you forth with an invitation and a promise into God's dream for your life to be a blessing to others? In whatever liminal space you may find yourself, in the waiting in between, may you hear the promise given to Jacob and to us Know that I am with you and will go with you wherever you go. Stay awake, aware, and available to God's call, my friends. A liminal space is a promising place. Amen. Please join us now in singing our hymn of invitation, hymn 60, Be Thou My Vision.
May you awaken and stay woke, remembering Christ has no body on earth but yours, no hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes with which Christ looks with compassion on the world. Yours are the feet with which he walks about doing good. Yours are the hands with which he blesses all the world. Christ has no body now on earth but yours. May you go in peace, and may the peace of God go with you. Amen. Amen.